So, Challengers is the new film from visionary filmmaker Luca Guadagnino starring Zendaya as Tashi Duncan, a former de- tennis prodigy turned coach and a force of nature who makes no apologies for her game on and off the court. This is a summary from MGM, by the way. I want to be clear. I didn't write this. Married to a champion and on a losing streak, uh, Mike Face, uh, Tashi's strategy for her husband's redemption takes a surprising turn when he must face off against the washed up Patrick, Josh O'Connor, his former best friend and Tashi's former boyfriend as their past and presence collide and tensions run high tashi must ask herself what will it cost to win uh this is like i said luca guadagnino's new feature this is actually finished last year and they sat on it for a nice long time to get it to come out now uh now it's finally here reviewed his previous works bones and all and suspiria here on the podcast so we're excited to talk about it andy what did you think of challengers man I really love this movie. I was into it uh, from the beginning. This is old school Hollywood. It, it's about the personalities, the drama. It's not about explosions or car chases or, or shootouts or anything like that. It's, it, but it's equally as exciting uh, just because of this relationship between these three uh, people. When we first meet um, Art and Patrick, uh, they're teenagers, not very convincingly, but they're teenagers and uh, they're doubles partners and they're they're kind of known as fire and ice. And that is, is representative of their personalities. Uh, Patrick Zweig, uh, Josh O'Connor's character is, uh, he's a hothead, he's a bad boy, he's uh, he's reckless, he plays fast as loose and that's that's exciting uh, to, to, ta- to Tashi. Uh, but then, then you have uh, Mike Faye's character, again ice in the fire and ice and he's safe he's buttoned down he's a family man he's he's dependable he's uh safe but it's so she's kind of pulled between these two directions and throughout the course of this um uh this you know 12 15 years that, that it covers um they they have both uh been her significant other and they find themselves revolving around themselves about uh the film jumps back and forth a lot in time but we meet them as uh young uh, teenagers uh kind of in college and then about 10 years af- after college and oh man there's just so much going on um i'm stumbling over my words but i i, re- I really liked it i was in into it and amazing soundtrack too Oh, man. I know. I don't have enough good things to say about Challengers. Challengers rocks. Challengers rocks, dude. Uh, A fantastic love triangle story in a way that I have not seen in a very long time. Three young, exciting, up-and-coming actors putting it all on the line. Luca Guadagnino seemingly... In, you can't knock the man down. I was telling Andy, I think he can do any genre at this point. He's done weird gothic dance. He's done weird gothic young adult road trip. He's done weird <laughs> love triangle tennis movie. Like, my man can do it all, and, and it can happen on the tennis court in Challengers. Uh, this 13-year gap that Challengers plays across from 2006 to 2019 is where almost all of our stories happening. And fascinatingly, the film really only has three major roles. I'll Outside of these three, nobody else has a lot of speaking lines. There's not really a lot of other character happening here. It's just these three. And it's fascinating, like watching them kind of come together. Because it's a movie, I think, about gays, right? It's a movie about how you see one another. I didn't mean for that to be a double entendre, but I realize now it kind of sounds like (laughs) one. It's a movie about, like, looking at somebody and feeling one thing and then how somebody else looks at another. Lots of looks exchanged in this film, as seen in the poster with Zendaya, like, knocking her glasses down. You can see the reflections of each boy. I love the way she sits perfectly between the two of them in this game that is kind of overarching the whole film. Uh, the film opens with it, closes with it, and cuts back to it on occasion. And while I'm not a tennis pro, I don't know anything about tennis really, I can say confidently that the movie does a really good job of communicating the geography of tennis. The sets, the points, they've got a scoreboard in the corner for some scenes just to keep things moving. They even foreshadow it with dialogue to explain where things might be going in the game. Like, they do a really good job of keeping this game tense while also cutting back to 13 years prior and then moving upward through time to 2019 when the game happens. Very sneaky to completely avoid the pandemic by setting the game in 2019. It's good. Uh, but it is also, I should say, a script not written by Guadagnino. Uh, films written by Justin Kuritskas, who is A... Uh, The husband of Celine Song, who wrote Past Lives that we watched just this last year, which is also uh, a movie about a love triangle, funny story, and B, 
He's the potion seller guy, which I can't believe. And I went back and watched the potion seller video, and I'm like, I can't believe it's the same dude. And it is. His his website's bio links to his YouTube page. It's him. Can confirm. Like, uh, it's baffling. Have you seen that video? Any? Uh, this, this is the worst thing not. to ask you in the middle of it. Really? Oh, dude, I got to study the potion seller. 19 million views on potion seller. It's insane. Wow. Um, yeah. One of those old, old, old internet video. Uh, anyway, uh, Justin Kurtz has wrote this uh, just a few years ago. I know the script was up in the air between studios. Uh, it made one of those like script blacklists uh, that come out every few years. Mm-hmm. It's like, here's 20 yeah. scripts that are really good. And then, Finally, Guadalino got a piece of it, and here we are. Anyway, I've gushed enough about the writing. We should talk about the plot. Uh, Andy, do you mind taking this for a second? Yeah, so, like so, so again, we, we, meet, we meet them as teenagers, and they're on the verge of stardom. Uh, Tashi, uh, Tashi uh, at that point, when she's, she's known as Tashi Duncan, uh, man, like – she's going to be a star like she's going to go pro in fact there's conversations like why are you even bothering going to college just go pro now you're good you're good enough uh, but she's she wants to go to stanford and she ends up going to stanford with uh with art uh mark face character where like they have her on the billboard she's like caitlin clark is now but for for tennis um and and tashi loves both uh, of these men but she loves tennis more and it's all she talks about if you've ever this was me when i was 20 years old and uh uh, me, aspiring musician music was all i would talk about to, to my detriment um and that's how tashi is like she cannot stop talking about it and she and she's very blunt and you know when the other, other guys come in like you know she will criticize their game like all the time and she's right like they can't say any anything back um but uh tragically t- uh tashi suffers an, an injury um in her college to end career and it's career ending uh she throws out or blows out her knee has to, has to retire goes into the coaching game and that's where she is now and she's coaching uh mike face character R- donaldson who is a pro but he's his career is waning and she's kind of struggling to to continue to be with him because you know she is someone who who craves competition and high level performing and uh the guy that got the chance that she didn't is kind of uh just kind of over it and that's where uh patrick's vag is the, the opposite uh, and he's a disaster he's bro he's living out of his car he's uh he he's hooking up with women's for a place for a place to stay it but he's um he's got that fire in him uh, of competition and that's part of what how tashi is drawn to them so that's kind of the story we get where tashi is the best tennis player of the three but she's injured and that cuts her professional career short and she's in the she's back seated as a coach which she doesn't really want to be doing but it's kind of the only way she can be close to the game a film chock full of parallels it's also worth mentioning that tashi duncan does not come from money goes to public school parents can't afford nice stuff uh, art and patrick are both boarding school kids and have known each other since they were 12 and have kooky stories about each other maybe even a couple kinky stories about each other um so tashi naturally is drawn to them because of their gravitas but i mean patrick obviously is a genuinely talented player and art is very good too but he's got a lot to learn right the fire and ice analogy fits <laughs> aptly um there's a lot of like code switching. There's a lot of dress change. Uh, I saw a meme today pointing out how a couple characters swap shirts multiple times throughout the movie. One of them is very noticeable at a, at a trademark. I told you shirt. Um, but like, I like the way the, this love triangle just bounces off one another. Like it's not just an, a, a matter of one wants the other, the other wants the other, the other wants the other. And they just spin around. It's you have one, but you can't really have the one you really want. And the one you have is lo- you're losing them. And it's this constant like feeling of insecurity and chaos in the middle of a game that is very precise tennis uh, and, and trying to navigate like, I don't know, feel, interpersonal feelings across relationships, across years, across a game, all set to an incredible soundtrack from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, one of their best in years. I've been jamming it on Spotify all weekend. Uh, Acid House Trap. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, they, they said they wanted something that sounded like you were, well, it's probably a meme, but I read somewhere that they wanted something that sounded like you were literally in a club dancing. And it seems to fit like the best. It's, it's such a emphatic. It fits like, everything. Yeah. Feverish beat. It's amazing. You can work out to it. You could study to it. Like it's, it's tremendous, like incredible music work. Also incredible visuals, I should mention. Uh, it starts off real grounded. There are some wild things going on by the end of Challengers. There are some crazy shots. And we've seen Guadagnino 
pull off big visuals in something intimate like Suspiria, right? We've seen him with wide lenses in Bones and All. Like here he brings all of that. Insane things happening in the end of Challengers. Like makes for a wildly biting third act. Also, we got to talk about how horny it is. I don't know if you want to take that or if I should, <laughs> but like we got to, like you can't talk about this movie, I think, without talking about the sad. It, it's definitely very, very sexually charged between all three uh, people involved. And, you know, there's been a lot of literature written recently about how younger audiences particularly don't really like sex scenes in in film and in tv any, anymore for a, a number of reasons um and there's actually less of that uh, be, because of changing taste but in this movie uh, guadagnino uh embraces it but but he he strikes that balance where it, it it's sultry it's sexy it's it's very exciting but it's but it's not pornography it's not all the way that and it's not but it's also not like pg let's just kiss some and imply you know shut a door and you just imply what happens like we're shooting people in bed a, a lot it, it's very sexy but it's also restrained in a little uh, restrained enough yeah somebody said uh like the sexiest scenes in the movie are the scenes that aren't any kind of sex scenes like it's it's the stuff it's the stuff you read between the lines that matters most and i think that's what's so interesting about challengers everybody i know that's seen it has had different favorite parts everybody's had different features that they talk about when they get out of it oh my god i love this bit oh this was so clever did you notice this like it's a film full of layers and because there's only like three real parts in it like it's wildly grounded you are very attached to these three characters you know everybody's first and last name by the time you leave the theater and you care about them and you care about their motivations and by the end you really want to know who's going to win this challenger game it's a big deal like it's a really big deal and it's amazing that a movie can pull you in over the course of just a couple of hours and have you that invested by the time the credits roll like huge i think this is one of the last times guadagnino is making like an indie feature i think he will be a mainstream director or at least close to it from here. Like, cause I thought that about bones and all, he was literally working with Timothy Chalamet, but it was weird and it was cannibal and like, nobody went and saw it. Like I've seen so much heat for challengers. I think whatever he does next is going to be a big deal, right? Like it, it has to be, he's, he was literally going to the set of Dune to do ADR with Zendaya. And, and I was reading that Austin Butler, Jacob Elordi and Timothy Chalamet were all in the running for the two lead tennis player roles in this like it's insane my man is working with the biggest talent he can get he can't miss i don't know dude i think we might be seeing a great here like i think i think challengers might, might be a great film yeah de definitely one of my i it's going on my top 10 list it's a little early but um i'm, yeah. I'm putting it there really enjoyed it this probably would have been up for some uh awards things uh had to come out last last fall and again it, it's it backseats the tennis but it still feels like a, a a tennis movie this was my big complaint about king richard uh the will smith vehicle is that it never really felt like like you just had people kind of in in wearing tennis costumes and never got into the weeds but our, our characters feel much more like authentic players and the court stuff is uh really exciting it almost kind of turns into an anime at one point there's a part where uh you you get POV of the ball going back and forth and it's just it's nuts you get this really cool uh up down, uh, down up shot from underneath the court which mean which had to have been shot on like glass or or, or something like that um just some really cool camera work and uh, again it doesn't backseat the the sport as a character like a lot of other movies do no, I do want to say this is a shot by Guadagnino's longtime uh, cinematographer collaborator. I cannot pronounce their name. I'm just going to take a crack at it. Uh, Sayambu Mukdiprom. Maybe that's close. Uh, they shot like his last like three features and they're amazing. And I hope they continue working with him. Like it really does feel like a lightning in a bottle feature. And I say that from a director who, again, doesn't miss, dude. Bones and All was great. Suspiria was great. Like, both a blast. Uh, I need to go check out Call Me By Your Name. I still haven't seen it, but obviously a banger. Put Chalamet on the map. Um, knocked Army Hammer out of his career. Uh, no, that was an <laughs> accusation of cannibalism, actually. But uh, Challenger's a lot of fun. Uh, Andy, any other thoughts for recommendations? Uh. I just want to say that, that we have three incredible performances. Obviously, Zendaya is the big star, but both uh, Mike Faced, who was in 
the the West Side Story remake and his uh, classically trained uh, dancer, uh, he had to beef up a little bit for this role. Had to put on some weight because he was so lean in that that other movie. Uh, the movie's so tactile, like sweat just dripping off everyone. And uh, Josh O'Connor, who's like such a nice guy in real life. And like plays this guy who's kind of a, a douchebag, kind of a jerk, so well. He's so convincing, and and it's like that's how the sign of a great actor. We like really turns into someone that he that you know him not to be. So really st stellar performances. Yeah, notably, I should say one of the best American accents I've heard all year uh, from a Brit. Meanwhile, like Aaron Taylor Johnson is dying in the Fall Guy. He could barely keep it together. It's hilarious. Maybe that might have been on purpose in Fall Guy, though. I genuinely couldn't tell. Uh, Josh O'Connor gets away with it. You would never know. He's a Brit. Also, one more mention before recommendations. The soundtrack's real good. Please go check out the Challenger soundtrack. It's free, right? You don't have to go to the movie tickets to check out the soundtrack. You can go hit that right now, and then it'll be like a needle drop whenever you watch the feature. Andy, would you recommend Challengers? I absolutely would. This is easily one of my favorites of the year so far. Incredible performances from all our, our three stars, Zendaya, Mike Face, Josh O'Connor. Uh, really exciting storytelling. And it's a full two hours, and I was just glued to the screen the entire time. It's not like we were talking about the fall guy where there's slow moments where you're bored, go do laundry. None of that. I was just glued 100% in kicking soundtrack. I've added the soundtrack to uh, the my ongoing pl playlist fits with everything people have been putting the soundtrack to like fight scenes and car chases and other movies and it just works so well highly recommend definitely one of the highlights of the year same it's one of the best love triangle features i've seen in a minute they should put it in the criterion collection along with guadagnino's other feature challengers is a bop please go see challengers buy the blu-ray like it's good stuff dude go support challengers this movie rocks uh the memes are true challengers is great and that's uh god that's challengers that's the fall guy it's episode 251 andy what are we watching next week? So uh, this week is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, it's, which is uh, the big release um, from director Wes Ball, who, uh, who I can't remember what else he's done. The but, Maze uh, Runner. And he's doing that new, uh, he's doing like, Zelda. He's doing the Zelda movie after this. Right. So whatever, uh, whatever Zelda is. I'm really excited about this. I'm a big fan of the uh, the remakes, the Matthew Vaughn re remakes that uh, were done in the mid uh, 2010s. Um, this looks really good. It's got some good voice acting, apes together strong. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about it for sure. And then we're also gonna be taking a look at The Idea of You, which is uh, the rom-com starring Anne Hathaway and Nicholas Galitzin, which came out on Amazon Prime, actually uh, this past Friday, but we'll be taking a look at it on streaming. Uh, some upcoming movies that we're gonna be taking a look at and that are gonna be coming out, possibly uh, Back to Black, the Amy Winehouse uh, biopic, Imaginary Friends. We're probably not gonna watch that, but that's coming out on May 17th. That's the Ryan Reynolds uh, family feature. The Strangers Chapter 1 is also May 17th, the horror movie. And of course, Memorial Day, May 24th, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. My hype is off, is in orbit for that movie. Uh, but for next week, Kingdom of the Planet of the Eights and uh, the idea of you. Could not be more excited for Furiosa. If you enjoyed the show today, the best way to support us here at Offscript is just subscribe. Subscribe to the show on your favorite platform, whether that's on YouTube, where we upload live stream and videos uh, every week, uh, whether that's on Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, you can follow us over there. Any audio platforms, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartMedia, the show is available. You might even hear us right now, and you can hit the subscribe button there. You can also rate and review. Believe it or not, just dropping a five star is a huge help. Dropping a couple words helps too. If you want to bother leaving a rating, we'd appreciate it. And, uh, you know, comment engage that's what i need engagement from y'all just let us know what's going on let us know you're alive let us know you're watching movies out there just like us uh we love talking to y'all we love talking about movies and that's off script episode 251 from all of us at off script the home of bold cinema i'm zach lewis and i'm dr draper thanks for watching